Welcome back, all you beautiful thinking people, you, to Advocation X. It's time for a Trump, Drumpf, newsworthy broadcast. And of course, the topic I'm going to tackle here is the super bad cold illness that has been affecting the White House and those around the White House. First, let me say that um, my thoughts and prayers go out to the uh, first family and uh, all those who were exposed along with the first family. And um, I will say a prayer for them that they recover 100% and are able to get on with the business at hand. Um, I really do feel for them because I do understand that if it were me and I was testing positive and had a little bit of symptoms, the things that would be running through my mind, of course, would be how severe are these symptoms going to get? Am I going to recover? Am I going to die like this? Will I end my life on a ventilator? And thank God my wishes have been spread out among my family and close friends that if I am ever in a situation like that, I don't care how you get in, but you get in. And you bring a bottle of Grand Marnier, and we will do shot for shot together. And I don't care if there's 100 people in the room, I will do 100 shots for every one that you guys all have to do yourselves. Because that's the way I'd prefer to go. If I went with the alcohol poisoning after drinking all those Grand Marniers, I would be totally fine with it. I'm not going to sit on a ventilator. Remember that, folks. If you happen to have an opportunity, you let them know. He does not want a ventilator. Period. Do not stick one in him at all. No ventilators. Okay? Period. Don't want it. Anyways, so back to the first family. Um, I, I realize how difficult those thoughts must be uh, about what is your future going to hold? Will you have a future at all? This is a very, very tough time for the first family and for those who deeply care about them. So uh, in addressing this, I, I do have to consider the elephant in the room. This is what you would call a self-inflicted wound. As you see right now, I'm here and isolated. I'm not wearing this, okay? Okay this. I do wear it. And I wear it wherever it is necessary. I wear it whenever there are people close by. I wear it to make sure that those around me are not full of anxiety over the fact that I am not wearing it. Okay? So, understand, I am not an anti-anything. I'm not a pro-anything. I'm just somebody who uses common sense. Okay, um, if it happens to be my time, I'll deal with that. But right now, I'm going to do what I need to do to protect me and you and whatever else you think uh, to the degree of my common sense. As I started to hear the news unfold about all those around um, the Drumpf who were testing positive, I mean, somebody coined the phrase, and, and I, I totally have to agree with them. He has become a super spreader. He has gone all over the place and exposed people everywhere, knowing that he was exposed himself. I, I mean, again, I'm trying not to be super critical, but the elephant is sitting on my head. And I can't get it off. All these months and months and months, I've been hearing the rhetoric around um, masks and hydrochloroquine and all these other things. And I totally understand how difficult it must be to accept the fact that something that you can't see, nobody around you has really been infected or affected, it's difficult to maintain that fear. 
So the news has taken up that chant and really instilled fear in all the people around all the nations that this is the most terrible pandemic to ever hit the human race. I beg to differ. Do I condone the super spreader in chief and the way he's handled it? Not one bit. You set the example when you're supposed to be a leader. See, I don't like wearing this, but I do. Because I don't wish to put anxiety in your life if you happen to come in contact with me or in my own by having to fight off people in grocery stores and all over the place who are upset that I'm not wearing this. I have a several and I wear them. So let me tell you this. Send your thoughts and prayers to the spreader-in-chief and also ask him if he has learned his lesson and if he's going to do what's right from now on. Because the amount of people he's exposed himself to, it's impossible for him not to be infected. For most of you out there, you may never come into contact with anybody who's ever been even close to being infected. But the more people you contact, the more chance that you just might have to deal with it. Okay, And then I pray that when you do, it's just going to be a mild here and gone within seconds. Or it's going to be one of those that you don't even know came and went. So that's what I wish on, on all of you that may be exposing yourself on a regular basis to many, many people. Um, let me just go a little deeper. Masks. Please understand that all of these masks of all different types of cloth, of all different varieties, different patterns and lovely fashionable ones, if you spray an aerosol through any one of them, the aerosol goes right through except an N95. But you're not supposed to wear those because they're supposed to be kept for professionals so that they can do frontline work. And do you know why? Because when you use an N95 mask, anything coming in is filtered if it fits you properly and if you wear it appropriately. And anything going out is contaminated with whatever you're breathing out. So let's say you have TB. You're protecting yourself against contracting covid but you could be spreading TB to everybody else. This is a good reason why they don't want everybody wearing N95s because you have a false sense of everything is good, but everything is not good unless everybody in the world was wearing an N95. Oh, but then wait. Your eyes are not protected by an N95 and you can contract the disease through your eyes. Oh, wait and wait. Your, your ears are not covered by an N95 mask. And apparently you can contract this super bad cold illness through your ears. This makes for quite the dilemma, don't you think? How do you protect yourself? How can we all assure that everywhere we go we're safe? How can we assure ourselves that we can go to the grocery store and not have to worry about touching dragging through our ears, in through our eyes. How can we protect ourselves? I think every government needs to provide every single resident of their country with hazmat suits, with the full cage, full covering, top to bottom, oxygen fed in. Every time you go anywhere, you must be in your hazmat suit and hooked up to your air supply so that you can breathe and live. That's the only way you are going to protect every citizen from the super bad cold illness. Uh, good luck with that. So barring that, what do we do? Well, let's see. How many illnesses have we faced over the decades and centuries. How many have been critical and killed multiple 
multiple thousands of people. Maybe even millions. What we did then was we exercised common sense. If you were sick, you didn't go see grandma. You didn't go see Uncle George who had a lung infection or one lung missing. You didn't go and visit people who were sick when you were sick. You didn't go to school when you were sick. You didn't go to work when you were sick. You didn't go visiting when you were sick. You didn't go shopping when you were sick. You remember what they used to say to you when you were a kid? Oh, no, no, no. You're sick. You're too sick to go to school. You're too sick to go out and play. Well, if you're too sick to go to work, you're too sick to go out and play. You're too sick to go to the grocery store. You don't go spreading your sickness if you are sick. And guess what? Many people who were sick back then were asymptomatic. And they went out to play. And they went to work. And they got some other people infected. And those people, by and large, mostly got over it and went back to normal living. And there were some people who became casualties of that asymptomatic spread. That's something you really can't avoid unless you want to suit up everybody. Hazmat suits for everyone. Super precautions everywhere. Folks, I understand your fear. It has been propagated throughout the entire world. And everywhere you go, billboards and signs on the side of the street, neon signs flashing at you everywhere. Every time you go on the internet, you see all the banners and headers. Everywhere you go on the internet, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Bring up a new page, boom, there's a banner. You cannot get away from it. On the news, on the radio, on the news, on the TV, everywhere you go, what are everybody talking about? The super fear that they feel that's been pushed on them. People, don't be paranoid. Use your common sense. Take care of yourself. If you have an underlying condition, be careful. Don't go around people. Don't go into groups. And yes, if you do go into groups, your chances is you, you could get it. So if you feel you're of that group where you can withstand it and deal with it and go through it, and you're going to take precautions later and stay away from the older people or those who have other uh, underlying conditions, then by all means, go to work. Get things done. So... The spreader-in-chief had some good ideas and some bad ideas. His good ideas were get the economy moving. Because the amount of people who are harmed by the economy slowing down and jobs being lost and sitting at home with that spouse who's beating you or all of these other issues that are causing suicides and deaths because people are afraid to go to the hospital so they just overwhelm themselves with symptoms until they're just about dead. And I'm not talking about from the super bad cold illness, but from many different illnesses they may be suffering. So, everybody, please, use your common sense. Be safe. Take care of those that you know need taken care of, that can't or maybe are unsure of how to take care of themselves. Exercise caution. But please don't be paranoid. Don't put your paranoia on other people. Stop judging everybody around you and going, you should wear a mask, you shouldn't wear a mask, you should take a vaccine, you shouldn't take a vaccine. Who gives a damn? Let people make their own common sense choices. If they ask for your opinion, give it. If they don't ask for your opinion, Walk around them if you don't feel comfortable. Go on the other side of the street if you don't feel comfortable. Wait outside the room until they're gone if you don't feel comfortable. And don't touch anything. I heard a great story the other day about a woman going in to get glasses. And you know what? She had some anxiety. And rightfully so. Everywhere she goes, she's been filled with anxiety. And maybe she met you and you freaked out on her because she wasn't doing things appropriately. She's full of anxiety and she comes in and inflicts that anxiety on other people. But some people won't take it. 
And they look back at you and go, stick it in your ear. You have a problem? Remove yourself. Are they wrong to say that? If I am in my bubble with 10 people that I spend all my time with, and we are none of us afraid of anything that has come between us because we've kept ourselves clean and safe, and you go to enter our midst and tell us how to live our life, we're going to tell you to stick it in your ear. Remove yourself. Maybe you're the infected one. We don't need you near us. Get out of here. So don't be so quick to start jumping on other people because they are or they aren't. Just accept your lot in life. Exercise your precautions. Go around. Move away. Get out of that room. Go to a different store. Whatever you need to do to protect yourself, do it. But don't inflict your paranoia on everybody else. Because that anxiety is causing people to kill themselves. It's causing people to alienate themselves. It's causing people to not seek help for things that they really need to seek help for. Please don't do it. So, in conclusion, let me say, my thoughts and prayers go out to the first family and all those who were in their midst. My thoughts and prayers go out to everybody in every country. Please be careful. Don't get yourself inflicted with any super bad cold illness or any other disease of any other kind. Be careful. Exercise your own precautions. Make sure you're going to be safe. I do not advocate for being unsafe. I do not advocate for running through an Ebola-inflicted city without a mask and just hugging up everybody. I mean, you're going to make some people feel good. But then you're going to be one of those people who are stuck in that town suffering from Ebola. So... If you catch my meaning, please put it together, folks. Don't be foolish. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And above all, stay as happy as humanly possible. And remember, we never give up. We never give in. But we'll keep an open mind. Why? Because knowledge is our power. And what I'm trying to deliver to you is a little bit of extra knowledge that you can just keep with you. But always use your own discretion. So anything I say, remember, is informed opinion. Informed by the sources that I seek out or that seek me out. Not all of them are 100%. Some are 10%. Some are 20 Some 30 Some 40 Some 50 60 70 80 I don't think there's any 100%. But you know what? There may be. But it's up to you to determine what you listen to and whether it's real or not and make your decisions based on that. But stop the paranoia. Stop the hatred. Stop the fighting amongst yourselves. You cannot accomplish much when all you're doing is fighting back and forth. So, till next time, thank you very much from me and the crew for being here with us on this channel. And we hope to see you often. And we hope to see you soon. Take care. Thanks again.